Hey, what's up? Justin here and welcome back to 65 Drums. Today I wanna to do a video reviewing all the different ATV symbols that I've gotten a chance to play. So the 16 inch ride symbol, the 18 inch ride symbol, the ATV hi-hats, the ATV China symbol, the ATV ozone symbol, all the different symbols that they make. Okay, so let's start the video by talking about the two most interesting symbols that ATV currently makes. And these are still rather new. They didn't start off by making these, they eventually made them after their core line of symbols. So this is the ATV China symbol and the ATV like ozone, like holy style symbol. So are these symbols completely ridiculous? Yes, but do they bring a smile to my face every time I sit down to play them? Also yes. Now here's the thing, some people were confused when ATV first came out with these. They're like, why in the world did they make something that looks like an acoustic symbol but it's made out of rubber, it doesn't make any sense. The answer is twofold, really. Here is the first reason why I like these symbols so much. It helps you differentiate between different kinds of symbols in a visual way. Whenever you take a look at a regular electronic drum set, you just see an ocean of stock rubber cymbals that all look identical. One might be 14 inches and the other might be 12 inches across, but that's about it. When you're cycling through 10 different drum sets inside of your module, it can be easy to forget what the China symbol is gonna be or what the splash symbol is gonna be or what the effect symbol is gonna be. But when you have a rubber symbol that looks exactly what it's gonna sound like, it just makes things easier. So that's the analytical reason why I like the symbols. But really, in a more broad sense, I like them because they're ridiculous. I play so many different kinds of electronic drum sets, they all blur together, all the cymbals are exactly the same, and these are just different and fun. So that is why I like the cymbals. Now let's jump ahead into some specs and some specific features of the cymbals. These all have three zones, even the China symbol. You'll probably never connect all the cables to get all three zones working, but it's nice that that is a feature of it. They also are 360 triggering, and they're huge cymbals. No matter how they spin, you're gonna hit the cymbal and it's going to make a sound. I know that doesn't really sound revolutionary, but we've all had this problem on a Roland cymbal, on an Elisa cymbal, where it just spins this way a little bit too much and you hit the cymbal while you're recording something and all of a sudden it's just not very loud because you've hit outside of the main zone area. The cymbals themselves do not have any fake lathing marks on them. They don't have any hand hammered dents on them. It's just a stock clean looking cymbal. That also makes them look dirty very, very fast. So if you do wanna pick up some sort of cymbal cleaner, I highly recommend Aerospace Protectant. I'll link it down in the description below. Helps you clean your rubber and silicone cymbals. But overall, it's a great looking cymbal and they're well designed. They also trigger pretty well. Now, one thing that I'll mention is that I prefer the ozone style crash cymbal versus the China cymbal because, I don't know, I like the look of it, but also it's just easier to trigger it correctly. 
for some reason, I keep accidentally hitting the wrong zone when I'm playing the China symbol. So if it was me personally, I would just set it to a kick drum trigger style input. So that way to have one zone and no matter how I hit that crash symbol, it would just sound the same. So that's might be a knock against my playing or that might be a knock against me optimizing the pad inside of the module. But if it was me, I would set it to one zone. I think both symbols are great. I really like how they look different. And I really, really appreciate that they're trying something out of the box and different from other drum companies. I also love how large these symbols are. The China symbol, I believe is 17 inches across, and I can't quite remember how big the effect symbol is, but it's also very large as well. Now let's move ahead to the hi-hats. Now full disclosure, ATV did give me the hi-hats. I did not pay for them but I have been using them for a very long time and I've really gotten an idea of how they respond to different kinds of drum modules because I've tried it on like a TD-50, I've tried it on the TD-30, I've tried it on a Pearl Mimic Pro. So I spent a lot of time with these hi-hats and of course I also use them on the ATV-85 drum module. I will say they respond best on ATV's own module because they were made for each other, obviously, but they do also respond pretty well on Roland and Pearl modules. Now, I wouldn't say they're quite as good as the VH12 or the VH13 because again, Roland stuff works best with Roland stuff, but you can get them pretty darn close, close enough that I don't know if it's really worth it for the extra two or 300 bucks to buy the VH13 because I think that's like seven or $800 and these hi-hats from ATV are $500. The price delta in between those makes me feel pretty confident that the ATV symbols are better for most people. Unless you're really, really picky about getting the best, best hi-hat performance. And when I mean best hi-hat performance, I mean the ability to really dial in the foot splashes and all that stuff. It's the open and close performance of hi-hats that is really tough to nail down when you're making electronic drums. Like the performance of playing on the bow area versus the edge area, the, the Roland hi-hats and the ATV hi-hats are pretty well matched there. It's just that Roland on the VH13 side has a slight edge on the open and closed action of the hi-hats. I do also wanna mention though, that ATV does have a leg up in one other area. They have full 360 triggering on the hi-hats. The reason why this is important is that hi-hats are notorious for spinning. And I used to hate my life when I was always using a VH11 on a hi-hat stand that spun around a lot because I'd be recording a drum cover and I'd be going into some sort of rock part of the song and the hi-hats would just spin the wrong way and all of a sudden I'd have to redo the entire take. Well, with these cymbals, even when they do spin, I don't really notice because there's no dead spots really on the cymbal. On all these cymbals, there is a slight like ribbon cable that goes down one of the sides. It's like half an inch across. And that's the only dead strip on the whole cymbal. Everything else is full 360 triggering. So as far as strengths and weaknesses go, I like the fact that this is a three zone hi-hat. It's made out of very nice rubber material. It's 14 inches across versus some of the other 12 inch hi-hats out there in the market that are made out of rubber. And the fact that it has full 360 triggering. Now on the weaknesses category, I don't like the fact that it feels like they skimped out on the bottom hi-hat. It's just a plastic shell. 
I do like the fact that it's got an electronic eye that senses open and closed. That makes it so it's like not a moving part. It's not going to break, at least not break easily. So that's an advantage. But yeah, the plastic shell on the bottom just feels a little bit cheap to me. Not because it's not well made. It's just that I feel like they should have put a rubber coating on it or something to make it match the top symbol. Another downside is the fact that you have to plug this into the wall because it's using an electronic eye that needs power. And it is a two piece hi-hat, so that means it's going to be louder than a one piece hi-hat such as a VH10 or something like that. Overall, I think the symbol is excellent. All right, so moving ahead to the next symbol, this is ATV's 16 inch ride symbol uh, slash crash symbol. All their symbols are three zone, so you can make them into whatever you want them to be. I used it as a ride symbol on this Hawk drum set and had a great time with it. Here's a quick playing example. The nice thing about this symbol is that it could be a crash or a ride. So if you're building out a drum set piece by piece, it could start out as your ride symbol. You know, as you, you know, slowly build out the drum set, maybe eventually you get an 18 inch ride symbol and then this symbol becomes your crash symbol. Okay, so the next thing I wanna to touch on really briefly is ATV's line of splash symbols. They have a bunch of them in different sizes. They got you covered on pretty much any size symbol that you could wanna play on. And I feel like these mm, might not be the best bang for your buck for the average drummer. If you just want a cheap splash symbol that you're gonna play on every once in a while, you would only wanna buy the ATV splash symbols because they're more expensive than the average symbol. You'd only wanna buy them if you really want your symbols all to match. If you don't care about your symbols matching, you could probably buy like a cheaper CY8 symbol from Roland or something like that because you're not gonna play on this symbol all the time as a splash. But yeah, these are great for matching purposes, but they're not as great as far as value goes because you're not gonna be playing them all the time. My only disclaimer for this section of the video is the fact that I've only ever seen these or held these. I've never actually plugged them into a drum set and actually tried them myself, but they're made out of the same components as all the other ATV symbols, so I can only assume they would respond pretty much identically. All right, so let's move ahead to the next symbol, and that's the ATV 18-inch ride symbol. I've had this one for like, I don't know, six months or a year or something like that. I bought it a while ago and I've really, really enjoyed using it. People pointed out in a lot of my older videos that having a 15 inch ride cymbal, my CY15R, just didn't look that right on a big acoustic sized drum set. I knew I had to fix that, that issue, it didn't look right in videos, so I went out and bought an ATV 18 inch ride cymbal. And I gotta say, I've been enjoying using it ever since. Now as far as settings that I use personally on this ride cymbal, I usually set it to a Roland CY15R trigger type inside of my TD30. I lower the threshold all the way down to like zero so that it really is sensitive and picks up everything. The problem with larger and larger cymbals is it's got more surface area to cover with whatever piezos that they're using inside of the cymbal. So you wanna make it pick up literally everything. So that's why you'd wanna lower the threshold as low as it can go. And then I believe I turned up the rim gain a little bit to make like the, the bell and the edge a little bit more sensitive. Overall, it's a great cymbal. Now I know the thing you're, you're probably thinking is how does this stack up versus the Roland 18 inch digital ride cymbal? If you wanna see a really in-depth analysis between those two symbols, I did a comparison video, which I'll link down in the description below. The Cliff Notes version of that video is that the Roland symbol is indeed better than this ATV symbol. But there's a problem. You gotta buy a TD50, which is $2,500 right now, and then you gotta buy a $500 ride symbol, and you can buy the package if you want the snare, the ride, and everything. Overall, the Roland ride symbol is better, but it's so much more expensive that the average drummer is gonna be just fine with this ATV symbol. This ATV symbol performs beautifully, but it's not quite as sensitive. It doesn't work quite as well as the digital ride symbol. But overall, it's very, very good.
If you have an acoustic sized electronic drum set and you're looking to upgrade something, if you don't already have an 18 inch ride cymbal, switch over to any sort of 18 inch ride cymbal. It really does make a difference on the overall look, especially when you're filming drum covers or whatever. It also is just cool to know that you're playing on something a little bit more acoustic sized than just having like whatever, 15 inch ride cymbal. It just doesn't quite fit on an acoustic sized electronic drum set. So you might be noticing a trend on all these little mini reviews of their different cymbals. There's not really one that I don't like. I like every single one of them that I've ever played. The only one that I kind of was frustrated with is probably the, the China cymbal, and I would switch that over to a one zone setting so that you always hear the exact same sound no matter where you hit on the cymbal. Other than that, you know, one little change and really optimizing the ride cymbal and the hi-hat, you have to spend some time with these cymbals if you're not using an ATV drum module to really optimize them to work, you know, perfectly. But I gotta say, I am very, very happy that ATV made a full line of rubber cymbals. We need more competition in the rubber cymbal industry because there is none. You have rolling rubber cymbals, you got some Alesis rubber cymbals, uh, you know, Pintec used to make some rubber cymbals, you've got some Yamaha rubber cymbals, but there's not many third party options out there. And ATV makes a lot of very large, very high quality 360 rubber cymbals that are razor thin. These are some of the best rubber cymbals that you can buy out there in the market, and I enjoy using them every single time I sit down and play them. With such a limited selection of rubber cymbals out there, I really appreciate the fact that ATV makes a full set of them in pretty much every size and configuration you could possibly imagine. I really don't think there's been enough experimentation and innovation in the rubber cymbal section of electronic drums. I feel like not many companies are taking chances, not many are trying to make larger and larger cymbals, so it's just refreshing to see a company go the extra mile and make something that's really interesting. The only real downside to buying ATV cymbals is the cost problem. They tend to be very expensive. I feel like electronic cymbals could possibly be lower in price in the future. I hope another company makes something similar to this line of cymbals, but at a lower price tier. That would be very nice to see. Hey, that's been the video. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. You're the real MVP for staying all the way to the end. I appreciate that. Have an amazing day and I'll see you all in a few.